So today, let's look at uh, some properties of functions of a process, which is uh, Brownian motion, or a little more generally. Uh, let's see what happens if uh, we have a general Langevin type equation, which I will now call by a slightly different name in a minute, and the corresponding Fokker-Planck equation. And from these two, let's try and see if we can deduce uh, the equation satisfied by functions of the variable, random variables concerned. So, to refresh your memory, uh, we have been talking about a Langevin equation of the form uh, x dot equal to some f of x plus uh, a g of x times white noise. This is Gaussian white noise. delta correlated in the usual fashion. But as I said, uh, the rigorous way to do this is not to deal in terms of a singular object like white noise, but rather it is integral namely the Wiener process. So, the right way the mathematically better way of writing this is to write this as dx equal to f of x dt plus g of x dw of t. So, this thing here stands for what is loosely written as eta of t dt because remember that w of t was the integral of white noise. So, eta of t dt is essentially the increment in the Wiener process. Okay. This process itself, this Wiener process this had a property w of t average was equal to 0 and w of t w of t prime the average value is the, the lesser of t and t prime a non stationary process. Okay. So, this equation in general is called the Ito equation Ito equation and it is the starting point of the so called Ito calculus about which I will make just a few preliminary remarks. Okay. It is a slightly different uh, calculus than the one you are used to because this process here this d w is a very weird one as we saw uh, when I explained a little bit about Brownian trails and so on. So, we will see what it implies what sort of rule one has uh, when you have when you are dealing with the Wiener process as thing as uh, as non standard as the Wiener process. Okay. Now, corresponding to this we know there is a Fokker Planck equation satisfied by the conditional density of this variable x of the random variable x. So, that equation uh, was and I wrote this down without proof this quantity p of x t for some initial condition x naught say this satisfies the Fokker Planck equation it is the master equation and that equation was delta p over delta t equal to minus delta over delta x f of x p plus one half g square of x times p. So, this is the correspondence between the stochastic differential equation and the conditional density for the corresponding mark uh, conditional density of the Markov process. Okay. We are going to exploit this. We did not prove this, but this can be rigorously established from Ito calculus. But the moment you have this equation with this kind of noise, you have this for the conditional density. The result is a Markov process x of t, the driven process, and its conditional density then satisfies this equation, Fokker Planck equation. Okay. So, we will exploit this fact and back and forth. Okay. So, the right equation, the right Ito equation or Langevin equation in various cases will be obtained by taking recourse to this Walker Planck equation. In the cases we can actually solve for it, for instance, we will be able to find out what related quantities, what kind of equation related quantities satisfy. Okay. Now, the matter is quite trivial when g is a constant, because then you have pure additive noise 
and then these niceties can be sort of slurred over. But when you when it's a multiplicative noise, one has to be cautious about the Eto equation. Okay. So the first example we look at is what happens to diffusion in d dimensions, d spatial dimensions. Remember that uh, we have an equation for the conditional density of the position p of r t given that it starts at some point say the origin for instance. This quantity satisfies the equation delta p over delta t equal to d d 2 p over del, del squared sorry del squared p of r and t. where del squared is a Laplacian in d Euclidean dimensions. Okay. Now we are interested in the solution which corresponds to p of uh, r and 0 equal to delta d dimensional delta function at the origin. So the particle starts the diffusing diffusion starts from the origin and then it spreads out in d dimensional Euclidean space. Okay. Now this quantity is spherically symmetric and the equation is spherically symmetric as well and we are looking for a solution which is got uh, which satisfies natural boundary conditions namely p of r and t dies to 0 as r tends to infinity along any direction in space. Okay. So the boundary condition is spherically symmetric, the equation is spherically symmetric mm, and the initial condition is spherically symmetric. Therefore the solution is spherically symmetric. right? So we are really looking for a solution that is spherically symmetrical and we know what the answer is. You can separate this in various dimensionalities. You can separate this for instance into Cartesian coordinates, solve each one dimensional equation etc. Or you can do this in polar coordinates, spherical polar coordinates. But we know the solution and we will exploit this and work backwards from the solution. Because the solution is P of R comma t equal to 1 over 4 pi d t to the power d over 2 in d dimensions hmm, e to the minus r squared over 4 dt. This is the fundamental Gaussian solution. This r squared stands for x1 squared plus x2 squared up to xd squared okay, square of the radial coordinate. But what is the actual equation satisfied by this quantity here and just to remind ourselves that we are looking at a spherically symmetric solution. Let me in an abuse of notation write this p of r vector t as p of radial coordinate r and t. Although we must remember that this is the probability density of the position of the displacement vector and not of the radial coordinate alone. So what is the equation satisfied by this? This becomes equal to d times divided by r to the d minus 1 delta over delta r, r to the d minus 1 p sorry. Okay. That is the Laplacian written out in spherical polar coordinates in d dimensions and retaining only the radial part. The angular parts are not, uh, the, the p does not depend on the angular parts and therefore those do not appear in the del squared at all. Right. Of course when you go to d equal to 3 you get the familiar 1 over r squared d over dr, r squared d over dr. And let us write that out. So this is equal to d times d minus 1 uh, r to the d minus 2 over d minus 1. So this over r delta p over delta r plus d times So you have a term which is not just the second derivative but also first derivative term sitting here. Okay. Now let us say we are interested 
in the probability density function of the radial distance from the origin. Okay. That is the modulus of r and we need to know what its equation is, what its solution, what equation its distribution satisfies and what is the actual corresponding stochastic differential equation. So, we are trying to work backwards and therefore, let us call rho of r comma t the radial distribution function of this fellow r. So, r equal to mod r. and we want the distribution function of this row. Now, what is the customary way of doing it? It is to say look I take this fellow the actual solution for the PDF of the vector r and then I integrate over all angles and what is left is the radial distribution. In three dimensions it would be 4 pi r squared e to the minus r squared over dt and so on. What is it in d dimensions? You need the analog of this 4 pi in d dimensions all solid angles if you like. Hmm? The surface of a unit sphere in d dimensions is what you need. In two dimensions it is 2 pi because the radial uh, the circumference is 2 pi and in four dimensions it is 4 in three dimensions it is 4 pi in four it is 2 pi squared and so on. Hmm? The general formula is uh, 2 pi to the d over 2 over gamma d over 2 multiply it of course by this factor r to the d minus 1 and then a p of r and t. So, if I multiply this by this factor here and then put in this volume element r factor in the volume element I get the radial distribution. You can check I mean when d equal to 2 for instance it is going to be equal to 2 pi this is 1 2 pi r times p and when d is equal to 3 then you get 2 pi to the 3 halves that is pi root pi over gamma 3 halves which is half root pi. The root pi cancels the half goes up there and it gives you 4 pi r square and so on. Okay. So, this is what rho is whatever it is this constant factor is actually irrelevant because this whole thing is homogeneous in p and therefore, it is going to cancel out. What is relevant is that you have an r to the d minus 1 times p out there. Right. So, all you have to do is to remember that rho is r to the d minus 1 times p apart from a constant and therefore, p is rho divided by r to the d minus 1. Hmm. So, this immediately says delta rho over delta t equal to d times d minus 1 over r delta over delta r rho divided by r to the d minus 1 plus d you are guaranteed that rho is going to satisfy this differential equation right and now the task is to simplify it write out this second derivative term and so on and you get an equation which is going to tell you what so this will lead to implies a Fokker Planck equation for rho of r. that is trivial to write down you can write down what this equation is and then you work backwards you work this correspondence backwards to find out what is the stochastic differential equation satisfied by r the process r. Okay. So, this is not a very trivial process in that sense because writing down the equation for each Cartesian component of this uh, position vector is one matter you have uncorrelated noise in the different Cartesian components. But now you are saying what is the stochastic equation satisfied by the square root of x 1 squared plus x 2 squared up to x t squared okay. and to navigate between the Fokker Planck equation and the stochastic differential equation you got to be very careful as you will see in a minute. If you did that finally, 
the stochastic differential equation or the Ito equation for R of t for this process itself turns out to be the following. It turns out to be R dot or dr equal to minus d into d minus 1 over R dt plus root 2d uh, times dw of t mm. or if you like the equation satisfied by rho will be delta rho over delta t equal to d uh, sorry so d here plus here minus d delta over delta r minus delta over delta r d times d minus 1 over r rho plus d d to rho over dr. So, I am skipping the intermediate steps what you have to do is to write this out as an equation for rho by taking out these factors recombining them and so on and eventually you end up with a thing like this which of course will immediately imply a stochastic differential equation of this kind here. So, notice that there is an extra term that is appeared here. What is happened is that this guy gives you a drift. This looks like the f of x comma t. This is like a drift here and the drift says that you are getting pushed away from the origin. Okay. And as I explained very briefly last time uh, a little earlier, this is a real effect because what is really happening is that the chances of any uh, fluctuation increasing r are greater than the ones that decrease r and this uh, tendency is enhanced as you go towards r equal to 0. Because if you are at the origin itself, the moment there is a fluctuation you have increased r definitely. So, this drift term is a real effect, it is really there okay. even though the noise in different Cartesian components is completely uncorrelated. The moment you combine these fellows together into the square root of x 1 squared up to x d squared you get this uh, systematic drift term here even though there is no external potential, there is no force of any kind, you still get in the radial variable a drift term. Okay. Now, of course, we already know the solution to the corresponding Fokker Planck equation because we work backwards, it is right here. The normalized solution is all you have to do is to substitute this Gaussian form here and simplify it a little bit, and that is the solution. But our interest here is in seeing what kind of Ito equation you get for this process. Okay. What about the square of this variable? What about r squared? What happens if you deal with uh, the random variable? Let us say r squared equal to x 1 squared to, sorry r equal to r squared which is x 1 squared plus, uh, plus x d squared. What sort of equation is that going to satisfy? What kind of uh, Fokker Planck equation or whatever do you get for that? Hmm? Well, one possibility is to say the following is to say look uh, this implies that 2 uh, that dr equal to 2 r dr just differentiating and then I put that in here. I multiply both sides by 2 r right and then I end up with uh, d r equal to twice d into d minus times d minus 1 the r cancels out and then there is a d t plus twice root 2 d uh, times little r but that is the square root of capital R. So, d w. So, the question is, is this the Ito equation for dr? 
looks very straightforward. All I have to do is to multiply this by 2r and that is the equation. That is wrong. This is wrong. It is not possible to do it this way because the Ito calculus stops you from doing this. It is incorrect to do this. I okay. will mention a little bit about the Ito calculus and then you will see what goes wrong in this because this quantity here in a sense the fact that uh, w of t w of t prime is minimum t t prime shows that d w is of order square root of d t. So, that is got to be kept in mind when you play around with these differentials here. The right way to do this is to say all right one way to do this is to say the following is to say okay, I have this r equal to r squared I have a solution for this little rho. In fact, I have the Fokker Planck satisf equation satisfied by it. So, what I should do is to see how the distribution of this capital R is related to the distribution of little r okay. and use the relation capital R is little r squared. Right. Then if I call the density function of this fellow let us say it is pdf equal to some pi of r comma t say for want of a better notation then I know that pi of r t dr equal to and that is a monotonically increasing function of little r. Hmm. So, I do not have to worry about the sign of the Jacobian this is equal to rho of r t dr. So, this will tell me that that will immediately tell me that rho of little r and t equal to pi of r and t dr over dr that is equal to pi of r comma t and this dr over dr of course is 2r that is certainly true. So, this is equal to twice square root of r. but I have a Fokker Planck equation for rho. So, I put this into that equation for rho mm, and convert all delta over delta little r's and delta over delta capital R and then delta r over delta little r okay, which is twice square root of r. Okay. So, I should be careful to do that and once I do that I have a Fokker Planck equation for this pi in which the independent variable the random variable is a, the, the uh, variable of which I am interested in is capital R. So, the derivatives will be with respect to capital R on the right hand side and from that Fokker Planck equation I can go back to the stochastic differential equation satisfied by this capital R okay. Now, that is a completely correct method because we have not done anything uh, playing around with the Ito equation directly. What we have done is to go to the Fokker Planck equation and say that instead of little r I use capital R as a random variable. And then it turns out that the correct answer is almost this. It turns out and I leave this as an exercise to you is 2 d dt. That is the correct equation not the one you would naively get by multiplying this by 2 r. So, is the logic clear? We are doing some, we are taking a shortcut to this whole business. I started with one solution to the diffusion equation, the spherically symmetric solution that is the Gaussian solution in d dimensions, right. And then when I want functions of the various coordinates which are sufficiently symmetric, namely spherically symmetric, then what I do is to start with that original diffusion equation, write it in radial coordinates, in, in polar coordinates for the radial variable, and then make changes of variables every time in the Fokker Planck equation to go from one independent variable to another and that tells me what the correct Fokker Planck equation is for corresponding variable and then the density and from there I go back to the stochastic differential equation okay. and that will give me the right answer always in every case. So, notice that again for this capital R there is a drift here and so on. 
Now, what does this thing actually look like? What does this distribution actually look like for the radial variable? Uh, remember that for the radial variable, this rho. So, by the way, this process R of t, it's called a Bessel process. This is square root of x1 squared up to x d squared, square root of d uh, squares of d Brownian motions. Hmm? In the case of uh, d equal to 2, hmm, the distribution is very nice and easy to write down, particularly easy to write down. It was r to the d minus 1 e to the minus r squared, whatever it is, and in two dimensions, it is proportional to r e to the minus r squared over 4 d t, some constant times this guy here. This is what uh, rho of r t equal to this in 2 d. This is called a Rayleigh distribution. There is a special name for it. I'm just trying to check whether. Yes, it is called a Rayleigh distribution. What does it look like for small r? It linearly increases and then of course, it dies down very fast exponentially in this form. It is particularly convenient. It is applied in various other places. We will not talk about that right now, but it is got a name because it has got some special significance. This process here is um, useful elsewhere as well, not just in the context of Brownian motion. Okay. Now, this formula here with this value little d, if this were d minus 1, it would vanish. This term would vanish in d equal to 1, right. But you can independently do the following thing. I can start with a one dimensional diffusion, Brownian motion and look at the square of that variable. Look at x squared, right and ask what is the probability density function of x squared. Of course, x squared will have a sample space running from 0 to infinity, but you can ask what is the distribution of this x squared and that is not very hard to write down. Hmm? And then from there, from that solution you can now go back find out what is the Fokker Planck equation corresponding to it, it is easy to write down and then go back to what the Ito equation is. And it will turn out to be exactly this equation with little d set equal to 1. So, if you look at ordinary Brownian motion in one dimension, so d equal to 1, now you have an equation, the stochastic equation is dx equal to square root of 2 d dw of t, that is it. Okay. Because I had written this earlier as x dot as square root of 2 d times eta of t, now I have written it a little more rigorously if you like in terms of as, a, as an Ito equation. Hmm? Now, what is the Fokker Planck equation corresponding to it? It is delta p over delta t equal to d e to p over d x 2 of course. That is the usual diffusion equation right. And the solution, the fundamental solution p of x and t is 1 over root 4 pi d t e to the minus x squared over 4 d. And now, I can ask what about the distribution of the random variable r equal to x squared? Okay. It would be tempting to multiply this by 2 x, but that is wrong. That is wrong because there is no drift term here at all. Huh? That is not correct. What you have to do is to write this density. So, let us call uh, the density of this pi. So, you have pi of r and t dr equal to p of x and t dx. Actually, what you have is dr over dx. You have to take this in this form. 
and then compute this guy. Paying attention to the fact in this case, what attention have I not paid? I have not paid attention to one simple fact. It looks, looks very right, right? I mean this thing looks absolute right. What is what's missing here? It is not monotonic. It is not monotonic because remember minus x and plus x give you the same capital R, right? So, what I have forgotten to do is the conversion which I did between the radial coordinate and this R, I, it involved an angular integration. Surface of the unit sphere in d dimensions, it was 2 pi in d equal to 2, it was 4 pi in d equal to 3, 2 pi squared in d equal to 4. What is it in d equal to 1? 2, because how do you define a unit sphere? Centered at the origin, the locus of all points unit distance away from this point, right? So, in the case of one dimension, there are two points. So, you have 0 and then you have plus 1, minus 1, those two points. So, there is a factor 2, this surface thing. So, you really got to multiply this by 2. This guy gets multiplied by 2. You did this earlier in the, in the quiz we had, you had to find uh, the distribution of the probability that the modulus of the difference between two Poisson variables was equal to 3. So, what you did, such a few has got the right answer. Uh, what you did was to say that this difference could be either plus 3 or minus 3, so you just add up the probabilities. In that case, it was not just multiplying by 2 because the distribution was not symmetric, but in this case it is because this Gaussian is symmetric under x goes to minus x. So, this pi has a factor 2, extra factor 2 multiplying. When you put that in, you get an, a solution for this pi out here. And then you can work backwards and ask what is the corresponding Fokker Planck equation and then what is the actual diffusion, uh, what is this Ito equation for the variable x and it will turn out to be this with d equal to 1. So, it turns out in this case here, this variable here obeys it dr equal to 2 d dt plus 2 2 d r. Notice that there is multiplicative noise. This implies multiplicative noise because if you write the Fokker Planck equation down for it, what would that be? This would say delta pi over delta t equal to minus delta over delta r 2 d times pi out here plus. Uh, one half the square of this guy, the two goes away. So there's a four d uh, delta two over delta r two r squared p. Ah, uh, sorry, r times pi. So, this is the Fokker Planck equation satisfied by the square of Brownian motion, one dimensional Brownian motion, by, by the density, probability density for the square of Brownian, one dimensional Brownian motion. Okay. There is this term here, this extra term sitting here, which you would not get if you did not take the correct Ito equation. Okay. What about the nth power of ordinary Brownian motion? What about this guy, x to the power n? So, I will call this some other variable, xi equal to x to the power n, where x satisfies this Ito equation. Here. So, what you do is again say, let me find first the density function of this guy here, or at least the equation satisfied by the density of this variable by starting with the density of x itself paying attention to whether it is monotonic, etcetera, etcetera. And then once I have that Fokker Planck equation, I go backwards and write the Ito equation for psi. Okay. So, I leave you to prove that this thing here 
also satisfies a, a Nito equation which has got a drift term and a diffusion term and there is multiplicative noise in this case. So, the nth power of Brownian motion or a diffusion process is also a diffusion process. Okay. What about the exponential of Brownian motion? What happens if I exponentiate it? Let us see where that gets us. So, let us put xi equal to e to the power x. Actually, I should put e to the x, uh, I should be careful about dimensions, but let us assume I measure x in some units, appropriate units. So, I put an L for a scale factor if you like, but let us assume this is dimensionless now and then ask uh, what is the equation satisfied by this exponential here. Okay. Now, this is of course, a monotonically increasing function of x starts at 0 when x is minus infinity, goes through 1 and goes off to plus infinity as x tends to infinity. right? So, there is no hassle about folding and doubling and so on and so forth. Then, uh, if I call the density of this rho of xi t d xi equal to p of x t dx. So, d xi over dx. d xi over dx is e to the x which is xi itself. right? So, immediately I get p equal to x rho and then I go back and say delta over delta t oh sorry xi times rho. There is a rho here and there is a xi outside because that is not getting differentiated, it is an independent variable this is equal to on the right hand side I have d times d 2 over d x 2 times p that is xi rho. So, let us write this as delta over delta x xi rho, but this is delta over delta xi times delta xi over delta x which is xi itself. And this delta over delta x, let us write it as delta over delta xi and multiply by a xi, but that removes this. Okay. And that is it. I simplify this guy and whatever I get is the stochastic, uh, is the Fokker-Planck equation for rho. Okay. From that, I can get the equation satisfied by xi itself. Okay. So, let us do that. Let's, let's do that. What does this imply? Delta rho over delta t equal to d times delta over delta xi times that is the first term. When I differentiate this, uh, well, let us do it slowly. Delta over delta xi times xi uh, rho plus xi squared delta rho over delta xi. This is equal to d times delta over delta xi is a rho I am not so thrilled by this. Plus d xi delta rho over delta xi. I am not sure if I made a mistake somewhere. Uh, okay, let us see what happens. This plus two xi uh, d delta rho over delta xi plus d xi squared delta two rho delta xi two. Mm. This is not the way to write it. Mm -hmm. 
is not the best way to write it. Uh, three there. This is not the best way to write it because I need to write it as a drift term, which is a delta over delta xi with a linear term rho on the right hand inside the bracket, some function f of xi times rho plus d2 over dx d xi2 g squared times rho. So, I need to manipulate this a little bit. Mm. Well, not thinking too clearly, but anyway. So, you have got to write this back as minus delta over delta xi f of xi rho plus uh, 1 half d 2 over delta xi 2 g square of xi times rho. So, you have to bring it to that form. Sir, yeah. Second term. Yeah. Write it as rho by rho psi of uh, zeta square rho minus uh, rho times 2 psi. Ah, then you will get. Two. Then it is so, two. this term I write it as equal to d delta over delta xi. Xi rho is already there plus uh, delta over delta xi of xi squared rho. Uh, min minus 2 xi 2 xi rho that is right. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. So, this will give us uh, equal to minus d delta over delta xi of xi times rho because it is a minus sign plus d d 2 over d xi 2 xi squared rho. Very good. Yeah, that is it. Okay. So, that is the usual Fokker Planck equation. So, what will that imply now for the stochastic differential equation? This will immediately imply that d xi is equal to uh, d xi d t right plus square root of 2 d times xi times d w of t. So, when I take a half the square of it I get a d and then inside gets a xi squared. Okay. So, notice in this case that both the drift and the diffusion terms in the Ito equation are linear in xi. Okay. The standard one for x itself this is absent of course and this guy here is a constant, but now you got a xi here. The onstein Wollenbeck had this as a constant and this linear, but this is in between a very strange combination here okay. and this is called geometric Brownian motion. geometric and quotation marks. Okay. There is a small generalization of this and that is the model that is used in economics when they want to model stock market fluctuations and so on. Uh, the model used is d xi equal to some alpha xi d t plus beta xi d w of t in general. Okay. And this is called the Black Scholes model. The process itself, the xi process itself, if you use the Ito calculus, turns out to be a functional of v, a Wiener process. It turns out to be xi has the same distribution as e to the power uh, alpha times Brownian motion plus um, alpha minus half beta squared 
times t. Next time I'll say a little more about the Ito calculus. We'll write down the rules, the integration rule and the differentiation rule for the Ito calculus. Then this will become clear immediately. So, the way to handle this uh, strange object, this dW, is to change the rules of the calculus somewhat. And we'll do that in an intuitive way we will try to justify it in an intuitive way. It is after all a rule, there are other rules, other ways of arriving at uh, stochastic differential equations. When you have multiplicative noise, this is the problem. The correct stochastic differential equation to lead to the master equation, you need to write the correct stochastic differential equation. And I will explain this uh, two different conventions, there is the Ito convention, there is the Stratonovich convention, there are other conventions as well and you will see what the differences are between these. It has to do with how you write an integral as a sum over increments and depending on what convention you use, you get different equations, but the physics cannot be different finally. Finally, the probability distribution of the variables you are talking about are uniquely specified in any case. So, the to put it very roughly, you start with an equation for average values or moments quote unquote an engineering equation and then you make a model to a stochastic differential equation by adding noise on it and from there you go to a Fokker-Planck equation for the density function, probability density. Okay. The initial point and the final point have to be unique, they are measurable, they are testable in between. But the point is what is the intermediate stochastic differential equation you are going to write down and what is the prescription to go from that stochastic differential equation to the master equation and you can have two different routes in each of these cases. So, the equations could differ in between, but the route from the equation to the Fokker-Planck equation, the prescription also differs in a manner to compensate for this and get the same equation no matter what interpretation you use. Okay. I will try to explain this with an example next time.